Welcome back to In Other Waters. All right, let's explore the Baikal Site 2. Uh, by the way, every time I load my save game from the main menu, it has a percentage for how much of the taxonomy is complete. And right now we're at 94%, so we're very, very close. I do kind of... I know last time I ended the episode just down there, but I do kind of want to see what this is. Maybe you can't go down here. Maybe this is just a sample. Clogged vent. Oh, no. No, no, no. Never mind. You can go down there. Yeah, still not going to go the dangerous way first. Shattered walls. Angular plates piled with sand are all that remains of the rooms and structures that divided up this level of the facility. Sealed containers. Baikal containers marked with now dull yellow biohazard tape. What were they shipping into this facility? I'm really strongly suspecting that they built the bloom as a bioweapon. This is no lab. This is an industrial facility. These containers must have carried some vital resource for its operation. Fuel, perhaps? Derelict vehicle. The shell of some corroded maintenance vehicle is flooded with sand. Its top, a garden of microbial growth. Breached wall. This side of the vast tank has been corroded away, melted by the incredibly dense volume of microbes inside. Oh, this is where the other pathway would have taken us, I think. Oh, sorry, I forgot to read that description, but actually it's probably a good thing I didn't, because our oxygen was being sapped away. Crushed room. Whether it was a control room or storage shed, this room has been totally crushed by the facility's collapse. M. Diaz. Sir, Dr. Hesse has just arrived from Site 1. And then FT replies, send him through. Constantine has full clearance. Remember, Constantine was the one that people mentioned in the other facility, the Arcology. They said, like, what the hell did Constantine do? Or Constantine screwed us? Something to that effect? So Constantine is definitely a key player in this. And what happened? Alright. Let's dive in. Clogged tank. The shattered tank is dense with microbes. Thick green webs of growth stretch across the suit's visor, turning the lamp light acid green. Up should just go to the other place we were just at. Yes. Just want to double check. Wait. I, it says I can't go down now? Okay, that's not right. Thank you. Yeah, something about the, um, something about the depth in this game is kind of buggy. Doesn't seem to always realize whether you can go up or down. And also, right now, it says we're 36 meters under the ocean. Is that true? I guess we're not in the deep. I suppose that's true. I'm so used to being in the deep where it's like 1,500 that <laughs> something, uh, a number as low as this almost looks like it's a bug, but actually I don't think that part's a bug. Corroded walls. These tank walls were breached with explosive force, the remains corroding away over the decades that followed that violent act. 
We need to get out of this stuff. I'm gonna go. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get out of it without reading. Just, just gotta go. Okay. Ah. These pipes, those tanks. This facility was outputting huge volumes of something into the planet's atmosphere. This has to have been a geoengineering project, a way of changing Gliese 667CC. But looking at this place, it suffered a total collapse. What went wrong? I'm going to use this sphere fragment. Ah, much better. Dense bubbles. Oh, that's the sample I need, isn't it? Plumes of green microbial froth pour from the breached tank. Are these microbes even local to this planet? Or did Baikal bring them here? Bloom bubbles. Could give me a little bit of oxygen if I need it. South tank. The tank stands in a huge hall, its pipes leading off into the dark. This facility was not built to study this planet, but to change it. Collapsed pipe. These wide pipes look to have been connected to the hall's tank. They must have controlled the outflow of whatever was produced here. R. Ingram. Maintenance on the South Hall is continuing. And then R.I. replies, I'm seeing a massive pressure spike here. Control? melted consoles. These banks of consoles must have controlled the operations within the tank. Now the tank's contents have turned them to scrap. Tank breach. How did this towering metal container split apart so violently? An accident or something more? I'm starting to suspect maybe Constantine sabotaged it or something. I imagine, or, or I hope anyway, that someone here had a conscience enough to try to stop what they were doing. I'm not going to read that. Uh, wait, why was it undiscovered? Is that where we came from? Okay, <laughs> we can go now. Leaning tank. The central tank has held back the sand and rock, but it leans unsettlingly forward into the hall. Clear passage. Between the overhanging tank and the buckled, twisted walls, a clear corridor leads forward. Split containers. Crushed by the rock falls, broken open containers reveal rich patches of microbial growth, like miniature gardens. Console bank. A row of corroded consoles wired up to an umbilical connection which has been cut away. Overgrown suit. A sand-dusted chair props up the remains of a suit, the faceplate clouded with rich green growth. A suit? Isn't that rare? Every time we've found a suit so far, it's been something big. Something left by Manet. Yeah, I guess not. Just a normal suit. K. Hello. Control? I'm slicing it before it cascades. Clear the reactor chamber. 
The bacterial outflow is about to hit. I'm slicing it before it cascades. North tank. A fully sealed tank rises up through the center of the hall. Its sheer sides streaked with growth from the southern tank. Sliced umbilical. The connection between this console and the tank is sliced clean through. Is this what stopped it from breaching? So they literally meant slice. They're slicing the connection, the data connection to the tank, right? So whatever was causing things to explode and go out of control was nefarious commands sent through the network or something? Definitely a, an inside job. Sand drifts. A rising wall of sand leans heavily against the tank. Burying tons of equipment and who knows what else beneath its slopes. Access hatch. A large access hatch to the floor above lies open, its ladder corroded into a twisted rusty spine. L. Young's. Yes, sir. Atmospheric density is increasing ahead of schedule. Please inform the board. They will be pleased. Control room. The rows of sand-choked desks, rusted consoles, and dim monitors make it clear. This was the facility's control room. Eroded bones. Preserved by the low flow of water inside the control room, the smoothed out shapes of human bones are scattered across the floor. Here. This is where they controlled this place once. They were changing this planet, manipulating it. These vast tanks of engineered microbes were their tools. Algae changed the atmosphere of Earth billions of years ago. These creatures were meant to do the same. But by accident or sabotage, this containment was breached. These idiots. They could have killed every last species on this planet. Eaten up in a global bloom. Somehow the reef survived. Somehow the stocks held on, tried to revert our mistake. Humans don't deserve this planet. We didn't deserve to find life. I've seen enough. Scan what's left, and I'll take a look back at base. Let's find a way out of here. See Hesse. No. No. Oh god, the tank is breached. The artificers... I didn't mean... Constantine? What are you? And then, oh, so Hesse, that's Constantine. Constantine Hesse. Uh, so, Constantine, step away from the console. I'm sorry. Okay, so, yeah, they definitely tried to end this. It's 
probably one of the only reasons everything or some things anyway on this planet are still alive. Emergency hatch. Control room's evacuation hatch hangs open. Piles of rock and sand all around. Control console. Despite the cave-in, this console is surprisingly pristine. A cup sitting beside one of the monitors where it was placed decades before. B. Badeo. We're doing the artificers a favor. Despite all their abilities, they couldn't manifest this kind of planetary change. Okay, how, how would that be a favor? You can't completely change, you can't completely change the properties of a planet that has life on it without killing most, if not all of that life, can you? Because they all had adapted to how it was. What they were doing here definitely wasn't altruistic. Just doing the artificers a solid. Security seal. This is why no one escaped the facility. This tunnel is sealed. The control room's escape route cut off. Metal corridor. Sealed at both ends, this corridor is pristinely preserved. The Baikal decal is still visible on the gleaming walls. Security seal. A second seal locks off the corridor at the other end. They made sure no one would escape. Sealed tunnel. The tunnel leads out into a small shelf overlooking a rift, discreetly cut into the rock. Ah, things return to a much more pleasant color. Northern rift. Back in the open water, the current at this end of the rift softly pushes against the suit. Rift wall. Above, the steep rift wall meets the shelf of the bloom. Where are we now? Like in relation to things we've seen, I'm not exactly sure. We can go up more? Oh, it says we can, but we can't. Bloom Shelf. To the north, green clouds rise up. The familiar sight of the bloom that surrounds the shelf and the facility below it. Sheltered Waters. Behind the pillars, the reef-strong currents are lessened, making a small sheltered stretch of water on this side of the rift. Oh, yeah, I think I recognize this now. This is one of the fingers, one of the three fingers. I think we're near the eastern rift. Ah, and then all these are places we've been before. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's call in for pickup.
back online? Good. I've been working with the data we extracted from the facility. What they did there. It's terrible. They could have wiped out life on this planet. Like Call should have known better than to mess with the entire planet's ecosystem. The failure of the facility was catastrophic. The bloom dominated half of the planet. As far as I can tell, it wiped out the artificers. Think about those skeletons in the bloom. But the rest of the planetary ecosystem reacted somehow, resisted, pushed the bloom back. I don't understand how life could have adapted to the change in conditions so quickly though. It's as if they evolved to meet the challenges of the bloom in mere decades. Impossible. Let's keep looking. There's another facility to investigate, out to the east. There has to be more to this. Wait, where's that bloom bubble? Was that not the sample we needed? That wasn't the sample we needed, but then how, how do we get that? The highest levels of toxicity surround this hole in the bloom's central ridge. If we could get below this point, we could sample the bloom's source. Was there some cave? Just like... Just some cave anywhere in the vicinity that had a, a door that we could cut through or something? It's the only thing I can think of, something that I've forgotten. We must have the tools to get this now. We have to have them. I'm sure of it. Just a matter of finding it. All right, well, I'm going to go searching and I'll bring you back when and if I find something. Aha! This is what I missed. I gotta pause it so my oxygen doesn't disappear. Um, in the big bloom tank, I could have gone down one more level. I didn't go down all the way. Uh, let's take a sphere fragment. I am not gonna read these descriptions. Sorry, corroded lamps. The lamps, the old growth. This is where the bloom began. This is no native microbe, it's lab grown, built to convert light into power and oxygen. A vast microbial fuel cell designed to thicken the atmosphere of this planet, no doubt. But when it breached containment, I'm surprised anything still lives on this planet. It must have been devastating. Dense growth, that's the thing we need. Yes. Then we can just get out the same way. Let's examine it. Bloom froth. So now we have theory and sketch. The discovery of bloom froth colonies in Site 2 suggests that the bloom microbes are laboratory adapted cyanobacteria developed for power generation and terraforming. Baikal's original intention may have been to oxygenate the atmosphere of Gliese 667cc, thickening the atmosphere to offset atmospheric warming due to its tightly locked orbit. But when their terraforming site was breached and this species reached the open water, they visited a massive ecological disaster on this planet. How did the planet survive? This aggressive species should have turned this ocean green, flooding it with neurotoxins. Such an adaptive, aggressive, genetically modified species is outlawed by every biological sanction we have. I am preserving these samples as evidence of their crimes. 
one day by call will pay for this. head over to the East Reef to head to Site 1. There it is. living colony. Behind the barrier, the throbbing interior of the colony is revealed, filled with throngs of Zuid acting as one. This is an entirely new life form. Floating colony. I've never seen a colonial creature of this scale or complexity. Can it really be one single united creature, made of ever-shifting processes? Pulsing Passage The vague shape of the facility's walls is preserved by the colony, the spaces between filled with shifting swarms of life. Floating colony. The interior of this creature is like a golden bubble, the light trapped and refracted by hundreds of pearly orbs strung together. Zuid flow. Each zuid has a function within the colony, their flow back and forth evidence of some complex process that is impossible to parse. This colony breaks the surface 20 meters above. It must be floating on the surface, its body descending in layers like a living iceberg. I'll call this colony Rattus. It floats beautifully across the ocean, like some impossible vessel. Rattus colony. Vast colonial creature made of thousands of specialized zooids. It floats freely in the ocean, its upper section breaking the ocean's surface. Room Fragment A fragment of a room eaten away into some strange sculpture, hanging in the blue. It's hard to imagine what this place once was. Clark. The artificers are gardeners, not colonizers. They rewrite genetic code to develop mutualism, to foster life. M. Thorfinn. That is absurd, Kevin. They are no different to us, adapting their environment so they may survive. And Casey replies, no, they are not us. Wall sections. From some angles, the zooid clogged walls of the facility line up, and I can imagine the past life of this place, with all its human dramas. Gas bladders. More gas bladders holding the remains of the lab in place, like the pieces of a torn map hinting at the history of a long ruined structure. Oh, 
these give tons of oxygen. Well, they're gas-filled. I guess now we know they're made up of a lot of oxygen. Colony opening. The ocean stretches east from here, a blue desert beneath three red suns. What might lie out there, beyond the range of this suit? Zooid swarms. These shoals of golden life look solid as I approach, but passing through, they're little more than flurries of petals caught on the current. More gas bladders. This piece of the lab floats on gas-filled bladder zooids, keeping it buoyant. Some float in the open water. The perfect sample candidates. Flowing currents. The hollow structure of the colony allows water to flow throughout its core creating both bulbous corridors and open halls. Clear passage. Why would the colony preserve the rooms of the facility as it consumes them? What bizarre processes are in action here? Central lab. The central laboratory is almost complete, apart from the large tree-like growths cutting through its walls. F. Voigt. We can't let this continue. We never intended this. That thing they're building... G.S. replies, I know. Glad to see multiple people had a conscience about what they were doing. Colony's heart. Dappled light fills the chamber, passing through its complex branching strands orbited by swarms of zooids. This looks like a biologist's laboratory. It must have been the first exploratory base on the planet. They discovered the artificers. They started all of this. These were scientists like me, employed by my call to study this place. How did it end like this? The mines they were building in the arcology, the genetic research they were doing here. They were all working towards something, something bigger than just one lab. How could they have let this happen, these biologists? Our first contact turned into a resource grab. Scan all you can, and then let's leave this place. I'll review everything back at base. It won't be long before the colony eats this place away once and for all. G. Sour. Constantine has already left for Site 2. If the facility fails and Site 3 is breached, the Oceanic Mind can be stopped. The, the Oceanic Mind? So, them trying to stop what was happening here, it was a group of people coordinated. Constantine was the one that was doing Site 2. So I guess they call the artificial intelligence they were building the Oceanic Mind. Fractured lab. Eaten away on one side, the remains of this lab are like an open set, a staging ground for the colony's process of sublimation.
H. Roth. Sam, he wants to free them. As he replies, And what do the artificers want, Hannah? Has anyone asked them? S. Emerson. Constantine is too arrogant. Just because he discovered the artificers doesn't mean he can decide their fate. Budding Zooids. Tiny metusoid creatures are budding from the walls here, splitting off from luminous stems to join the flow. Tentacle Corridor. The walls are a flowing mass of tentacles. Some have broken away and are floating freely in the water. We might be able to extract them. Colonial bridges. Between the ragged parts of the facility stretch looping bridges, pumping liquid back and forth from the heart of the colony. Webbed structure. Beneath the translucent webs of spherical growths, half-digested walls sit suspended, like an exploding room, frozen in time. I think that's it. I think that's all of it. Online again? Good. We have a lot to talk about. I've been digging through what we discovered at the facility. I was right to assume the facility was the first base on the planet. The start of all this. The lead biologist, Constantine Hesse, found the artificers here more than 30 years ago. But what is truly incredible is what he discovered they could do. Genetic reprogramming rewriting RNA and DNA, both in themselves and their local environment. Some Earth cephalopods could rewrite their RNA, but nothing at this scale or detail. The artificers tended to this world, nudging its life into new arrangements. Not only that, but their exoskeletons, they were quantum computers. Silicon wafers of incredible complexity and purity, able to simulate the outcomes of their genetic rewriting. The artificers were housed in natural machines, ones that evolved here over millions of years. Their complexity far outstrips our own. We could have learned so much from them. But by call one of the artificers' abilities for themselves, and based on what we found at Site 2, we know how this ended. A total collapse. A vast microbial fuel cell leaking into the ocean, eating everything away. The artificers gone. The genetic abilities used in death to save this planet's life. They died for this planet. And you are all that survives them. Well, perhaps not all. I keep seeing the same thing mentioned in the data, the same term appearing in fragments. The oceanic mind. As far as by call were concerned, you were just the beginning, the first mind. The artificers were the key, inscrutable creatures with a quiet power. Able to simulate, predict, then able to change. They could rewrite life itself. For by call, the opportunity this provided was clear. While the artificers were like gardeners, caretakers of this world, by call imagined something else. 
an oceanic mind, providing total control of the ecosystem, able to enact their will. That's what they were building when the colony collapsed. And it's still out there. In the deep, powered by the heat of hydrothermal vents, the oceanic mind sleeps. I want to see it for myself. We have to know how this all ended. I've marked the approximate position on the map, way out to the north, deep in the abyss. Let me know when you're ready to see this through. Okay, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. That was a lot. <laughs> Well, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when we return, we have a new crew terminal entry, we have some examining of two new samples to do, and then we're going to head out towards the oceanic mind somewhere, way, way, way out here. <laughs>